Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Locks Foundation Disc Golf Weekly Podcast. I'm Hunter, joined as always by Trevor and Connor. We're going to go over the New World Championships and tour card updates, Trevor's trivia, a little in the bag section, and then some off season player tracking in today's episode. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. I'm excited to partner with today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is an easy to use app that includes everything you need to stay safe online. They protect you from scammers, hackers by scanning the so-called dark web where criminals sell stolen information, looking for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers. It alerts you fast if it finds anything. They help you fight back against those annoying websites that make your personal information public by automatically requesting the removal of your info. This helps reduce robocalls as well. Aura also gives you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like if someone was opening a loan or credit card in your name, and their VPN allows you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. And they protect your devices from viruses, malware, spyware, and more so the bad guys can't even try to break in. Aura helps keep you... Oh, oh, Aura also helps you manage what your kids do on their devices. We're parents about to be old enough for our kids to need to be managed. So Aura will help us do that by restricting them from specific apps, set screen time limits, and even set focus times to ensure your child's doing their homework instead of binging YouTube. Mm. Thank goodness my parents didn't have that. You know what I mean? (laughs) Uh, Let Aura do the hard work by keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial with our link. You'll be shocked at how much of your private information Aura finds exposed over those two weeks. So if you're curious, go over to Aura.com slash Foundation Disc Golf to start your free trial. Again, that's Aura.com slash Foundation Disc Golf. It's also linked in the description down below. Thanks again to Aura for sponsoring today's episode. All right, we had the second of two wraparound events just go down this past weekend. So 2022's calendar year season is officially over. Yeah done uh 2023 we're two events into so take that how you will um it was a pretty exciting event i did notice i didn't get to watch all of the rounds live but i did notice my phone notify me that they were live during yes. like round one mm-hmm. which silver events last year that wasn't the case it was only the final right. round so i don't know if that's the plan going forward yeah, i don't know. know if they've announced that that's a good question. but um i did notice it was something uh, which New World isn't new to the Pro Tour. I believe the Pro Tour Championship was there in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. It was the year Chris Dickerson won. He won down there. Uh, but it, I don't think it's really been seen on the Pro Tour since then. Um, so on the FPO side, we had Maria Oliva take down her first ever Pro Tour win. Deanne Carey came in second. And Jessica Weiss and Sarah Hokum tied for third. On MPO, we also had another first-time silver event champion, Mr. Paul McBeth. Uh, he took down his first-ever wow. silver event, according to the Pro Tour's Twitter. I didn't believe it, uh, but the yeah, Pro Tour I tweeted it. So, that. like, you know, we're going to question the Pro Tour. Interesting. Okay. Double G came in second, and then Isaac and Ezra Robinson tied for third. Little brother yeah, duo the brothers tying are popping it up. Off. That's fun. Um, I saw Isaac, I believe it was Isaac posted, and he was like, I wonder if this is the first time ever that two brothers have been on lead card at a Pro Tour event. Has to be. Surely. Oh, yeah. Probably. Well, the other ones like, definitely. Because, like, the only other ones would be, like, Nate Sexton has a brother that's really good. Yuli has a brother that's really good. But, like, the only they play Pro Tours. Not, and they definitely yeah, haven't gotten on a lead card. Definitely on a lead card together. Um, but, yeah, Paul being never winning a silver event before. I, I, I'm going to look this up. Uh, because I don't know if, like, maybe they're getting the technicality because they're calling them silver events now before they were silver series. Because, like, surely. You might not have won one. Right? Let's just go career wins. He doesn't. Like, in the Pro Tour era, especially over the last few seasons, he's kind of just won a couple events. Okay, eight tiers. You're going to be scrolling for a while. No, that's it. Yeah, no, he hasn't. You're right. He's won, like, the Gentleman's Club Challenge when it wasn't on the NT or Pro Tour. The European Open, which is a disc golf world tour event. So that was an A tier. And then a bunch of pro tours when they were just A tiers. But yeah, no silver series wins. Kind of shocking. Kind of random. Yeah. I mean, I guess he doesn't, he doesn't play I guess he just doesn't play that many. Yeah. It's probably why I think silver series events fields are weak. Because like this weekend's field was, was, it was weak. Very weak. Um, we can look now at points because this is, I found this very interesting, right? So 2022. Everybody's at Big Germ's wedding. That's also true. 2022, Ricky wins the overall points by five points. Yeah. Going into 2023, you've now given Paul a 50-point lead over Ricky. Yeah, it's a it's a valuable lead. And Chris Dickerson, 42 and a half. So like, I'm I think it's I think it's interesting because like the last silver event, Lake Marshall, the weekend before was the big money skins. So people were in Missouri. Right. Some players like Ezra made the drive back and played in played in the. Uh, 
silver event there at Lake Marshall Open, but a lot of players chose not to play that, and then a lot of players chose not to play the New World Championship. So these wraparound events, you do have players like Luke Sampson's gained 73 points so far, Ezra's at 58.5, Kevin Kiefer's at 54, Paul's at 50 for his win, Andrew Fish played both, got 49.67. So you have a lot of players who like... It's huge. Isaac Robinson, 36-point head start. Um, there's a lot of guys who like they just played played a few events, got some points. Why not? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm kind of surprised on FPO especially. Sarah Hokum has 76 points right now. She came in second at Lake Marshall, third at New World Championship. Um, I, I'm surprised like Paige, Cat, Kristen, none of them played. Uh, which Kristen I'm sure is back home. Um, well, they're probably thinking they won by they were had like a billion. They point did lead like last FPO. Year. It doesn't seem nearly as like, like how much was there if you lead? add Sarah Hoke if you give Sarah Hokum seventy six points, right? It puts her at seven ninety and she's about hundred and thirty away from sixth. Yeah, which is then hundred and thirty away from sixth is then two hundred and forty away from first. So that's three hundred and seventy away if you give Sarah Hokum the seventy points. So FPO doesn't really make that big of a difference. But who's to say 2023 is anything like 2022? It could make a big difference. Also true. Basically, for the 2023 season, there were some points on the table, a lot of points on the table, because neither of these fields were good mm-hmm. by any means. They yeah. had like a few good players, but when you look at the depth of a typical Pro Tour event, like they're, they might as well have been handing out points. Yo, yeah. If and you, you just had to show up. Yeah, if you were if you were like a top 20 caliber player, top 30 caliber player, like, yeah, it was basically like, here's some free points. And it'd be interesting to see, like, the the tour is, like, changing a lot right now to where, like, year to year, like you mentioned, like, there's we don't really know what to expect. Like, we don't really know just how valuable 70 points is. Yeah. But as the years go on and maybe like it'll maybe by the end of this year, like we quickly find out how much more valuable that is. And maybe you see more players like, oh, wait, these wraparounds are kind of, you know, kind of crucial because like, honestly, you know, it's a nice momentum gainer. Well, I don't it's actually not really a momentum gainer because because now you go into like months. off, Right. But it is momentum in the sense that, you know, you're starting the season with a head start. And like that's huge. And it maybe even it means now. You knock in, you knock out one of these wrap rounds. Like my thought process would be, I'm gonna knock out one or two of these wrap rounds, and then I'm gonna use that to maybe take off weeks, yeah, and not lose the opportunities necessarily. Well, because also, like, yes, you can look at it and say, like, silver events are gonna be dropped. So if I'm Ricky, I could be being like, well, instead of dropping one of the other ones, like, right? But points are so much easier these two wraparound events yeah like once the season gets going and it makes a lot more sense in the flow for players right. to be there these will be the these weakest are the, fields, these so. are the weakest fields you'll see all year yeah so exactly. that's more my standpoint or thinking is like that was that's the easiest win paul's gonna have all year yeah by a long shot and so why not take it absolutely you know and i'm absolutely. if i'm rick why not come to one of the two uh if i'm calvin you know gannon even like i, I think it's a I can understand the reasoning behind it because you're like, if I'm Ricky, yeah, I can show up. To, he, does he not live? I think in he Florida? lives in Florida. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know where he's off season. He yeah, might not. I don't know. Um, I mean, but if you're a caliber player like that, you're probably thinking like, well, I can just pick up a win at a silver event, yeah. and you're probably not wrong. Probably not. Um, but it's just gonna be harder than like if you were here. You just got to beat Paul, and if you don't beat Paul, you're probably coming in second. Right. If you're a Ricky Gannon Heimberg caliber player. Yeah, it is. It is interesting because like Paul beat the field by I want to say eight. Well, and if you look at it, if you look at the field, so you've got um, Paul that lives there. Mm-hmm. You've got Brody. He's got family there. Um, you've got Double G lives there. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you do have some players. I think that Ezra off seasons in Florida. Does does Ezra? I'm pretty sure. Oh, well, that's, he lives in the RV. I know I he had, yeah, I know he had mentioned that. So you do have a, a handful of players that it was just convenient for them, but then there are quite a few that um, are pretty committed, I think, to like, if there's a disc golf event, I'm going to drive to it. Yeah. You know, because like, what else are you going to do? Yeah, like, why not? Yeah, if you're a like road warrior, again, this is the weakest field you're going to face all year. Yeah. You better show up and get some points because like, if you're someone who's like, you might be able to make it into the Pro Tour finale. Like you're gonna be on the bubble. You you better have been in both yeah. of these. I wish you disc. I don't. Pretty sure they don't have like a strength of field metric yet. No, I don't think they do. I wish like, and I know like a sophisticated one would take work, but I even just a basic one where you add up the total ratings. Did you see they just came out with like a like a round? Um, 
It's like a round strength thing. Essentially what? ratings. The the Pro Tour was using it oh. to determine the best round of 2022. They made it their own rating okay, system. Okay, but uh, what were you saying? Keep going. I was saying uh, I'd just be curious, and like I could, I might just do this afterwards. But it would be interesting to see what like the average rating was in that field versus like a major, just as, or even just other Silver Series and Pro Tours, because like it is, it was such a weak field. Now, here's a question that got brought up, and I think is an interesting question, right? Let me just, uh, I'll pull up what I was looking at later. So player statistic wise, the highest rated player in the world right now is Paul McBeth at 1049. Mm -hmm. There is no one in 1050 yes. or above, right? We have 1049, 1047, 1047, 1044, 1043, 1043, 1041, 1040. Is that Manabu? M yeah, Manabu Kajiyama's 1047. What? Yeah. Hey, he um, should get over here. He's sick. But the question that was Dang, posed, and I think it's a fair question, is, and I, I believe I know the answer, but the rating there used to be several players in 1050 we've had paul get to 1060 before are players getting worse no well we obviously had, not we had the COVID inflation so you would almost think that the ratings just can't be accurate correct well i think they got they got pumped up during COVID, didn't they but did paul hit 1060 during COVID? no it was before COVID. yeah that wasn't uh, it. i don't know paul was definitely in the mid 1050s before COVID. but there were several players in 1050. yeah let's go ratings history Paul hit 1060, 1062. It was in COVID, 2021, 2020. Well, he hit 1060 October of 2019. That was before, that was COVID. before COVID. So would, pre COVID. So maybe the, so what you're saying, like what is causing them to Here's level my out? theory is. It's just the bottom of the field's getting better. The bottom of the field's getting better. Yeah. So that's what, I, that's what makes sense to me. You no longer have a guy to go out there and shoot plus a million. I but think, what the PDGA says is that that doesn't matter. No, apparently it does. Well, of course it does. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> ratings, this is a whole thing, like why I hate ratings. Well, the PDGA is going to tell you that everything they do is perfect. Yeah, because like the whole, my whole qualm with ratings is I think they're great for AMs just to like be able to compare to your buddies. All of that's a fun stat. And I, I like that the disc golf world, like this is the first time I've talked about ratings and who knows how long because the disc golf world has all kind of collectively go, yeah. agreed these don't make sense. Um, and so the disc golf world has collectively agreed to like not really talk about them anymore. Um, thank goodness. Um, but I think this is a big thing. Why is like the field changes the hot rounds rating drastically regardless of what the hot round is. So you have things like Joel Freeman got the best round of the year, right? On the, when I was, if I can yeah. find this pro tour tweet, it was a while back. But his round at that, uh, was it Butler County? Yeah. That he shot an incredible round? Butco. But if you remember, the rating on that wasn't that good. Yeah, he, he definitely got robbed. Um, well, I, how, now, that's interesting they gave it to him because I think it should have gone to Paul. I agree. Let me find... Um, 16 under at WR. I agree. I think 16 under WR is one of the best rounds of all time. It might be the best round time. ever. Yeah. Uh, but that's what UDISC had this... Man, it's been a while. I think I put 16 at WR right behind 18 at Toboggan. Yeah. And all of that, ratings-wise, is drastically behind 17 under at Memorial, the Heiser Fest, which is, that should yeah, tell you hilarious. everything you need to know about ratings. Because the bottom of the field um, was shooting okay. like even par. Well, it's because there's so much OB out there, yeah. and the bottom of the field was Cheeks. Right. Um, where is, I just saw the FPO, MPO posted before, I, would, I guess. Okay, I'll scroll farther down. Uh, ba, 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 ba. here it is most impressive rounds so they gave so Paul so they it's a the UDIS Z score so Paul's Z score of the Champions Cup had a 3.1 and Joel Freeman had a 3.2 so at least it was close and you can read about the Z score here um, but yeah they basically admittedly it's tough to do Joel to do Freeman's it. because that course has like no precedent so like I understand that that's difficult and maybe that's even what makes his round even more special is because of the lack of precedent that course had. It's like people hadn't practiced it, but... Oh, it's based on... So the Z-score, the higher the Z-score, more impressive the performance is. In technical terms, the Z-score is the number of expected deviations a player's actual score is from an expected score. So essentially uh, what they use is their stats for the win probability. They took that model. So basically, Joel Freeman's performance was better than they expected Joel Freeman to be able to do versus Paul's performance at WR Jackson to his skill level. So, so Paul's round was better than Joel Freeman's. Yeah, it's just that Joel Freeman's a worse player than Paul. So when Joel Freeman so had an outline, it was a more, impressive, it was a more impressive round. 
I understand for Joel what, Freeman. I understand to do what that. they're going for. Yeah, it's it like, wasn't a better. It's like round. relational to the player. Like if Joel Freeman had shot the sixteen hundred WR Jackson, that would have probably been like a four point. I understand, but since it was Paul, it was a three point one. Interesting stuff. Okay, but anyways, yeah, I thought that was when you I were talking about disc stats. It brought. It, I remember seeing that tweet. But yeah, the ratings. I mean, the fact that the the field as a whole has gotten drastically better. In the best players in the fields, ratings are in probably close to ten points below what they were. Just should show like they yeah. the best players have not got a stroke worse. Yeah, but that's what the ratings say they have. I, I'm yeah, I'm totally in favor of uh, two different things. Number one being that as soon as you declare professional, your rating is gone, um, and you no longer have a rating because what does it matter? Um, now, I understand they're using it for tiered registration, but we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Um, but the other thing I'm in favor of is once you hit 1,000, you're a scratch. You're 1,000 plus. That's what I like. And therefore, the, anything above that. Now, and maybe maybe the difficulty is like maybe that number isn't 1,000 anymore. But now that I would say now that ratings have kind of leveled out a little bit after the COVID bump, then it probably is around 1,000. Um, like I'd say once you hit 1,000, then you can you can play on the Pro Tour. If you're like a legit thousand rated player, not just like a guy who had one. Well, so the rating. yeah, this is a good transition straight into the tour card. So the 2023 and 2024 tour card details have been released, and what we've talked about time and time and time and time again with tour cards are finally happening. Um, oh my gosh, I so, would love like a compilation of us like talking about this, and then like people's comments being like, "That'll never happen." It's like a violin play. and how to ruin the pro tour. <laughs> it's like it's it's the pro tour just takes a slow stand, like slow yeah. progression towards a lot of things that we've talked about multiple times. Yeah, seriously. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, this is doesn't surprise me, but I'm very excited for it. So for the 2023 season, the top 80 MPO and top 40 FPO players in point standings are officially qualified for the tour card. Say that one more, the what top? Top player? 80 MPO, 40 FPO. Okay. Um, essentially this year, more or less, the tour card's very similar to like the tour pass previously where it just, they can register first. So it's basically like auto registers you for every event and then you can pick and choose which ones you want to unregister for, but basically guarantees the top 80 MPO, top 40 FPO can play all the events they want to play. Okay. Um, it was an increase of five and 15 from previous. So previously 75 MPO and 25 FPO qualified. Um, they're also nice. continuing to provide exemptions for the tour card program. 10 MPO and five FPO exemptions exemptions will be granted for 2023 um, based on pro tour points, ratings, as well as considerations related to injury and international participation. Player seeking exemption can apply all of that. Um, while they're expanding, there will still be methods to qualify for Pro Tour events in 2023. Full event registration details in 2023 will be announced on November 15th, which is tomorrow, uh, and will include regional qualifying events, week of qualifiers, sponsor exemptions, and tiered rating-based open registration. Cool. So basically, there's one more step where ratings base is now a part of all these other qualifiers. Nice. Um, NADGT winners will also qualify for events based on the 2022 National Championship results. 2024, so this is future. 2024 tour card details. In addition to, to points-based qualification exemption, the number of pathways of tour card qualification will be expanded for 2024 to include events-based qualification for top finishers at 2023 events. The Pro Tour will also launch a qualifying series projected to include eight events in 2023. This qualifying series will award six MPO and three FPO players with full tour cards for the 2024 season. Qualifying event winners will also earn a partial exemption that will give them access to six 2024 Pro Tour events. Externally from the tour card program, players will be able to qualify for individual events on the tour based on regional and week of qualifiers, sponsor exemption, and open registration will be tiered based on PDGA ratings. So again, we're not fully there, it's just another step. Because like essentially what's going to happen. Right. Well, so now it's like now each, they're adding more, more ways that, that you have to qualify. Yeah. Before you get to the open registration. Right. So essentially the open registration guarantees are going to full, fill the field, but there's right. going to be probably several events where there's, the tour pass holders fill all but like two spots. The right. tour pass qualifiers. And then it's like. So cool. Open registration. I love the. But I there might be no one there. Yeah. I, I love the exemption like for winning certain events. I think that's super cool because like that's something. 
Um, that's like a really big deal on the PGA tour is like, if a guy gets a win, like knowing that, like, especially if you win certain majors, like the exemptions that you get into majors for like years to come, like yeah. it's huge. Well, so yeah. What does an exemption mean in this case? You, it's like, you don't have to, you don't have to meet the qualifications okay. right, to get the tour. Card. So like okay. if you're on the PGA tour and you won, if you win the masters, I believe I'm saying this correctly. If you win the masters, you get a, I believe you get a lifelong exemption into the masters. If not a lifelong, it's a very, it's like a long time okay. to where even if you weren't even on the PGA tour, didn't have your car, didn't qualify for the masters, you are exempt into that event. Okay. Gotcha. Like that kind of thing. And you can get, yeah, that would be the idea. Um, like so if here, you win Maple Hill, you get exemption into these different events yeah. for five years. So here's the 2024 tour qualifying methods. So that's what's going to be going on a storyline for this year. First 2022 tour championship participation automatically gets you a 2024 tour card exemption. So all players nice. who participate in the 2022 Tour Championship automatically receive that for FPO and MPO. It's a two-year exemption policy that's expected to continue. So meaning 2023 Tour Championship participation gets you two-year Tour Card exemption of 2024 and 2025. So there's another incentive to get to the Tour Championship. So mm. now if you get to the Tour Championship, meaning you're in the top, you know, 36 MPO, 18 FPO. I don't know if they're expanding that for next year, but or is it 16 FPO? If you're in the top of those, then Yes, you get the money and all of that for the tour championship, but it adds another level of prestige to the tour championship because those players now don't have to worry about their tour cards for two years, yeah. which I think is electric. I love that. 2023 tour points. So players can earn a 2024 tour card based on their 2023 season points total. So top 80 MPO, top 40 FPO. So to get into top 2024, you just have to be top 80 MPO, but to get two-year exemption, you have to get to the tour championship 2023 event-based qualification, the top finishers of 2023 events will earn a 2024 tour card, breaking that down. Top 10 MPO, top five FPO at majors get their 2024 tour card. Top five and top three at elite events get their tour card. And then silver events winners get their 2024 tour card. So for instance, Maria Oliva just earned her 2024 tour card so um, cool. from winning the silver event this past weekend. Uh, in 2023, there'll be a series of events that will award tour tour card qualifying points. These points will be tracked separately and are not pro tour points that will qualify players for the championship. So players at the top of these points standings will earn 2024 tour card. Um, I believe um, there's more info below, but I actually I know they aren't allowing current tour card holders to play any of the qualifying events. Mm. So the qualifying events, um, I'll find... Pro Tour is working with the PDGA tournaments to launch a pilot program of tour card qualifying events. The award points, these points are not tour points that qualify for the Pro Tour championships. They're just are used to track performance in the qualifying series and the top six MPO, top three FPO players will earn their 2024 tour card. <laughs> Right, we've got we've got to get into some of those. Yeah, fun. <laughs> the individual winners of each qualifying event will be allowed to register for a partial tour card that allow them to compete at six 2024 Pro Tour events. I like that. Um, any player who's already qualified for a 2024 tour card or otherwise becomes qualified via any other method is not eligible to, per to participate in the qualifying point series. When these otherwise qualified players compete at a qualifying event, they will not impact the distribution of qualifying points. Um, That'd be interesting to see like what how many players they could draw to those events. Like how many, how many players there are out there. So once they like launch the system completely to where like the tour is pretty sealed off at 80 for MPO, for example, like how many guys are there outside of that 80 that are like willing to tour. So they're like ready to go play qualifying events, but they just don't have their card yet. Yeah. Like That'll be interesting to see what that feels well, like. It seems like the, it seems like the pro tour cutoff points going to, for MPO is probably going to be close to a hundred in events. Yeah. And FPO is probably going to be close to 50 mm -hmm. um, or so somewhere in that range. Um, and I would guess that, you know, if like there's a hundred that have qualified and then there might be 20 spots open for like open registration. Yeah. Um, and so on and so forth. So like, I feel like that's like the 2024 model. And then probably by 2025, it's the open registration might be gone for most events where like by the yeah. time it gets to open registration, there's no spots. Right. And then probably by 2026, there is no open registration Yeah, to where it's just tour card and, and qualified individuals. I think, I think too, like, cause if you think about like the size of the touring field right now, like let's just say 80 people. Um, and then like 40 for FPO, like that is a pretty, very small percentage of like the amount of talented disc golfers in the country. Like you go to any local scene and just find like a handful of them easily. So I think that once the, once the purses get a little bigger, 
like there could be like I think right now there's like a the severe bottleneck is the purse size. Um, but I think once that opens up a little bit, the floodgates are gonna open. Because like if if disc golf became a little more viable, I think there is way more good players that are just not it's just not it wouldn't even make sense for them yeah. to go on tour. Like they're like, why wouldn't I go to college or, you know, pursue a career or and just play? Or disc they might golf be casually. working a career. Right. So I, I think that I think that this is good to have this set in place early because right now it kind of seems like it's not very cutthroat because like even if you're 80th in the world, like if you look at the UDIS rankings, like who are those guys? Like they're not competing for wins day in and day out. And that's, that is what it is. Um, but I think that once that bottleneck of the purses opens up a little bit and the money kind of there changes, you're going to see all of a sudden it, it, it could like triple. Yeah. Like the amount of people that want to pe- play on tour, um, you know, I, especially once you get to the place, like right now we're in a spot where like, if you're like top 40 in disc golf, I feel like you can make an okay living. That's just like a general example. But if we get to the point where like anywhere on that tour and you're doing okay, like you can make a living. Cause right now, like if you're top 80, like you're grinding out there. Yeah. But if you're, if we get to that point where like, if you just make it to the tour, it's like making it to the big leagues and like there's, there's money there. That's when you're going to see a whole new level of cutthroat. And that's why it's important to set this up now. And I'm really excited about this. I think this is super cool. I think this provides something for the players that are good enough to be on tour. They are feeling a lot more special now, a lot more like they're separated from everyone else because they've earned it and that they can say, you know, playing on the tour means something more now. Like having a pro tour card is like is extra value. And, you know, it's something that you or I just can't go out and get, you know, it has to really be earned. Uh, and so I think that's, I think it's really exciting. Like if I were a player on the tour, I'd be very excited about that. Just knowing that that's the direction it's headed and it's, yeah, it's just very cool. Well, I also think it's a key thing too. Like we were just talking about ratings, like right now in a lot of player sponsorship negotiations, there's ratings caps. It's like, right. you can't be on said team unless you're X, Y, or Z rated. Um, mm-hmm. I think that now that there is a tour card system developing can go away because it's like, the elite team at Discraft, the star team at Innova, or maybe the champ team at Innova. I I think stars reserved for major winners, but um, whatever these different teams are, it's like you have to have a tour card to have access to be on these teams. Uh, But just to kind of show a little bit of name recognition, uh, this is players who fall outside of the top 80 in the 2022 standings. Some of these players were injured. I know that. But just to read some names, Raven Newsom, Noah Fivish, Justin Rozak, Clay Edwards, Noah Miensma, Tim Barham, Andrew Fish, Nathan Queen, um, Bartez Kolowski, Scott Stokely, Nate Perkins, Terry Roethlisberger, Dustin Keegan, Dave Feldberg. Dave Feldberg probably didn't play that Dang, much. Dang, was Terry injured all year? Terry Roethlisberger? Looks like it. He did not play after Music City. Huh. Um, let's see. I just saw someone else. Zach Melton, Zach Arlingus, Jordan Castro. Yeah, there's players. Uh, there's players out there. That Cam Cole Glazer. There's definitely players that want to be on tour that Trevor are Harbaugh. of that cut. Yeah. Um, Somebody in Vegas must st- thought that I was Trevor Harbaugh. That's funny. Lance Brown. <laughs> uh, weirdest moment of my life. Now we're at players who aren't really touring, I believe. Philo. He did a lot more commentary I than tour. for Philo. Um, but yeah, so you get the picture. Like, even though it's not super cutthroat now... If there. that tour card happened this year, if top 80, which it it has, but it's not as cutthroat as next year is going to be, um, like there's already players that you're like, that's scary hours, man. You would realize like some of those names I'm sure you recognized and like there's a world where two years from now, those players just wouldn't be good enough to be on tour Yeah, because there's players who are like just taking their places. It, it is definitely scary hours for those guys in the fringe because you're going to, you are going to see a different level of like cutthroatness and emotion regarding like anytime we have now when we have those qualifier events anytime you see a player that's kind of on that fringe and have a chance to get exemptions like you're going to see some serious emotion well also there's (laughs) more storylines created by this because like now when you have a random player a chandler kramer Mm -hmm. pop off and become get top five at a major that is now a a tour card qualification to where like that is something that this year was a cool storyline, right? We yeah. we got to hear of Chandler Kramer. He got a lot of pro, a lot of points, 
But what did it really mean at the end of the day? What wasn't much? Yeah, it's like it's just like, oh, it's a cool story, flash in the pan moment. But now that flash in the pan moment, he's playing for so much more. Hey. It's not just a USCGC qualifying spot. It's not just top five at a major. Now it's like, man, I don't even have to worry about getting on the tour next year. I just did it. Yeah, I hope you just does uh, like adds in new color tabs for like the qualifying exemption spots and stuff yeah. like that to, to be able to track it because. That'll, yeah, it'll definitely like be a new thing to bring to the broadcast. It also brings something else to the playoff events because yeah. like now it makes the playoff events mean a little bit more when you're fighting for like that 80th. Chance. Yeah, it's like, man, I'm an 82nd. I'm in a playoff event it. now. I I've gotta, I gotta make something happen if I want to be able to guarantee my spot on tour next year. So sick. Yeah, so love that. But let's have a quick moment of our fan favorite segment, the one, the only Trevor's trivia. <laughs> so I was gonna harmonize with you, but I'm tone deaf. <laughs> um, so I went on to one of my favorite quiz sites today, or uh, Sporacle, because I, was, oh, I yes. haven't checked in a while to see like if they've put in more like a bunch of disc golf quizzes because like, oh, yeah, they used Sporacle. to not like really have any. Sporacle is a quiz website that like a lot of the quizzes involve you typing in as many of like a, something that you know in within a time limit, and it fills it in for you. Like people make these. Um, okay. And I think we, we may have done this a long time ago, but I want to give it another shot. And basically <laughs> I have a sporkle quiz that has all of the Innova disc golf discs. And this is okay. as of 2018. So there's 98 molds on here. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go with anything brand new. Like, so there's no Toro like the there. it, the Toro and the, the J and the Hawkeye, like those ones wouldn't be on here. Mm-hmm. Um, it set it sets a fifteen minute timer, but obviously not gonna go that long. So I'm gonna set a timer. Uh, let's. I'll do. Just oh, he's got an Apple yeah, Watch. Wow, it was. Very, I didn't even wow. plan to have this. Finally on, found your charger, huh? Yeah, very convenient to have this right now. But I'll. I'll <laughs> I've never seen that watch face before. It's kind of cool. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do. So uh, cool. We'll do two My minutes. Apple Watch looks like it looks like a regular digital watch. And the rule, Dude, sick. the yeah, rule is that you have to go. Two minutes, you said? Yeah, and you have to go one at a time back and forth. And we're just naming disc molds. And no hints, like, yes. There's no, Innova. like, oh, only in Okay, yeah. so, but there's no, like, no, order they uh, have to be in. No, and um, so, yeah, you, you can't, like, give a hint. So, if, like, Connor or Hunter, if you get stuck on on it, like, you're, you can't hint. So, okay. um, we got this I'll time. go as fast as I can type. So, starting with Hunter. Oh, but wait, but so are we working together? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Go. Destroyer. T Bird. Rock. Leopard. Beast. Banshee. Mako. Did the, did the three molds count as a I different was, mold? I was wondering the same thing. Did the three molds different things? Were they around in 2018? Just Let keep me. going. Mako 3. Firebird. Rock 3. Thunderbird. Rock X3. T-Bird 3. V-Rock. The threes Ooh. do count. Okay. AVR. AVR 3. Yeah, yeah, for sure. AVR X3. Pretty sure. Um, the stud. The boss. The colt. The katana. The nova. Good one. The okay. thunderbird. The wolf. The orc. The stingray. The stingray 3. There's no stingray 3. It's gotta be. Keep going. The cobra. <laughs> <laughs> you got a whole minute left. AVR th- we already said that um, mm-hmm. okay we got a whole minute let's calm down let's take our time here let's breathe you I got can- 24 out of 98 oh my gosh <laughs> what oh well we gotta go back. get into the fast Ram. get the into king, the king cobra wolf I already said wolf go into the fast drivers I did I only got a couple of them shrike yeah that was around yeah yeah uh, the Colossus. Is that around? I'm 2018 it screwing Colossus me. Was the Colossus was, was around. Um, 20 seconds. Excalibur. Mamba. Valkyrie. Roadrunner. Sidewinder. Yes. Uh, Groove. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, Max. Wahoo. Dragon. Polecat. <laughs> Zephyr. Time's Zeppelin. Up. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to type in the last few you got. You guys did pretty good there. We were doing pretty good there, yeah. I got stumped a few times. A lot of them would come to my mind, and I'd what? be like, 2018 seems like so far along. Like, how? Like, I was thinking, like, when Paul was throwing in, <laughs> that about, did, was, this, this, no, this, that, did this, 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 this. Every single disc 
<laughs> so, <you> can- <laughs> did this disc exist? Every single disc exist- existed. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard, dude. Say, did this disc exist? Did this disc exist? Yeah, Ooh, wow, it's tough. Tough. I stumbled. I stumbled. Every That's single tough. disc, except for the disc that Trevor said at the beginning of the game, existed. So the you J, have, the Hawkeye. You got so thirty. Every- 38 out of 98. Oh my god. That's pretty you guys are pretty what, good. What are some ones we missed? No. I mean they're they're blanks, but can, like oh, I mean there's a the lot spider. of spider. I think we missed the spider. <laughs> yeah. Um there's there's obviously We missed the uh, Rhino. Mm. The Rhino X, the Rock Plus. If I hit give up here, yeah. I can probably read through them. So Vulcan, here, I'll uh, just Vulcan, read through what you yeah. missed. The Dominator. The Orc. I said the Orc. Oh. Uh Vulcan Dominator, Daedalus, Ape. The turn, Daedalus was out in 2018. Turn mm-hmm. T Devil, Wraith, T Rex, Mystere. I had a Daedalus in 2018. If I say any that you said, just remind me in case I missed it. Crate, Archon, Starfire, Monster, Monarch. How do we miss the crate? Viking. We didn't, Monarch. Enough, we didn't have enough time. Did you say Monarch? No, I said Mamba. Mamba. We didn't uh, have, FL, these aren't things we forgot. TL3, Hunter. We didn't have time TL, to get Archangel. to Archangel. You definitely said Leopard 3. He said Leopard yes. 3. So I'll give you 39. Eagle, Whippet, Viper, Gazelle, Eagle? Cheetah, Cayman, Wombat we 3, did, Wombat We didn't have time, Cobra. Hunter. Spider, Skeeter, Shark 3, Skeeter. Panther, Manta. You mm. said Mako 3 as well, so I'll give you to 40. Kite, Gator, Foxbat, Crow, Atlas, Shark, Rock Plus, Rat, Coyote, Wedge, XD, Pig, Mirage, Hydra, Dart, Arrow, Yeti, AVR, Whale, Rhino, KC, so, AVR, oh, JK, AVR, Wow, well, I guess they, they had those used in there. all the AVRs. Classic AVR, AVR Driver, Sonic, and Birdie. So I'll say 40. Um, 40. We could have got like, but here's what I'll say. Most you guys got like, once we got Casey Aviar, we would have got Yeti and JK. Here's what I'll say. You guys got like 41%. Yeah. I don't think we really forgot anything. We just didn't have the average score for 15 minutes is 54%. So like you guys did very good. So if you, if you want to go on Sporacle, this is literally called end of a disc golf disc quiz. You'll see it. If you just search disc golf on Sporacle, we just told them all the answers. Um, yeah, but they could give it to their friends. I wouldn't have spelled who claimed to know Innova. I wouldn't have spelled any of them. And right. we know all of them. I just read them and we'd still probably do only a little bit better. But you get you Fox uh, bad, I do it do it in two yeah, minutes I, and I see if you can uh beat Hunter and Connor's score. I think, you know, they did pretty good. All right, let's have another that word. That was very fun. I love games like that, Trevor. Yeah, where, I lot of just, sp- where I can just pull out the weird disc that I know in my head. <laughs> there's a lot of those sporical ones. We'll have to try some more. You know, let's weird discs like destroyers and T-Birds. Another quick word from our sponsors. Ooh, this belly button. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friend over at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped mm, Performance yeah, Package 4.0. Pie. The leaders in below the waist grooming have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topic. You'll be telling everyone about your new cutting edge body trimmer and gift your gift yourself for the man in your life. The ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Trim your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and use code GRIPLOCK for 20% off and free shipping. <laughs> Bro, that disc exception thing just I, threw my brain for a whole I'm so loop. Sorry for our Manscaped stuff to come in. I know, I am too. You think <laughs> your holiday spread's good? It's time to give thanks to Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0, or as I like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Inside, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair trimmer, the Crop Reviver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Crop. Well, no crop in front of Performance Boxer Brief, but they should probably. Crop Performance? Maybe sure. not. <laughs> and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Thank you for this cornucopia for your body. Can't forget also the Manscaped's liquid formulations, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Toner Sprayer like the pumpkin pie and ice cream after a Thanksgiving dinner that you can't live without and your balls will be living in turkey heaven with these formulations. <laughs> As if it wasn't enough, it's time to do the dishes with Manscaped's shower products. Lather some of Manscaped's refined body wash or their brand new signature body buffer and give yourself the lather and I ordered a body buffer. I'm your very body excited about yeah. Lose the loofah and exfoliate your mates. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code GRIPLOCKED at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code GRIPLOCKED over at manscaped.com. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from Manscaped. Ya balls. Well, thank you. All right, it's time for another segment that we've made. One of our favorites. Hopefully, it's one of your favorites as well. I won the voting last week for in the bag Great by job. one one percentage point over Trevor. That I went back and I close. I went it back and I close. looked at the plastics that I chose and I was like, no one was ever no one was ever voting for those. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> they were good. They just weren't the people's choice. It yeah. is. There's two ways to play this game. I kind of go like every other game with like the one I'll be like try to go people's choice and the other one I'll just I go no strategy. I've decided I was going, no strategy. I was trying to go interesting disc that I thought feel good last time. I the wasn't bright going for side. people's choice. Bright side, people I think will I've side already, with that eventually. I've already won more Twitter polls this year than last year. I think 
That oh, is that job. is big for you. That is growth. Yeah, right off the, you right about, off the bat. You want to talk about audience growth that you want to Twitter Bad poll. boy Hunter Thomas is gone. Now people like yeah. Hunter Thomas. Yeah. Is now now it's bad boy Thomas, Connor. Man. Yeah, bad boy Connor. No, I'm not a bad boy. Bad boy Connor. <laughs> only got 19%. Nobody vote, nobody no, vote no, no, for no, bad, no one bad boy. No one votes for Connor in Twitter polls. That's the thing. <laughs> I'm not a bad boy. <laughs> um, so I get to pick the order. I'm going to go myself first. Okay. Trevor second. Dang, I'm Midland again. Connor third. All right. I'm always the midler. Midler. Uh, and this week, the topic for In the Bag, if you're not familiar with In the Bag is, basically we each pick four things on a certain topic that we would put in our proverbial disc golf bag. They're very proverbial. Um, <laughs> so this one is ways to beat in a disc. Mm-hmm. Ways to beat in a disc. I get to start it off. Okay. I'm going with, I have so many that I want to pick. I know, same. I did not have a chance to to really prepare this, which is my own fault. That's way better though. Winging it in a segment like this is the best. I think I'm going with two minutes and just scrabbled it down. The best ways to beat in a disc is just let me play around with it. That's a great, that's That's a great answer. Honestly, I didn't even write like play around with it down. Well, let me play around with it because Um, I will hit trees for you. Play around with it. That is a great, uh, that is a great one. Trevor. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, intentionally throwing at a tree. That's good. Because it's like the natural way to beat in a disc the same way you would beat it up in a round. All right. Intentionally hitting a tree. I've definitely done that multiple times. Never forget me as like a 13 year old with my champion groove in my backyard just repeatedly over and over again. And then throwing it after like 10 times and seeing if it goes any straighter (laughs) at like 200 feet. It didn't. All right. So I get to choose two. Mm -hmm. Two, I have two very good ones right off the bat and then no more. Um, My first one is put it in your dad's bag. That's oh, funny. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I do that. If I have a disc that needs to be beat up, leave it in my dad's bag for like a year and then I come back and it's like a Dude, time capsule. I will and say, so, yeah, I gave my dad a lot of my discs at one point, like a lot of my disc better. craft. Mm-hmm. And when I see his bag nowadays, I'm like, oh, look at that force. That baby flips up. Yeah. <laughs> like I want that. Yeah, exactly. That don't have the heart destroy- to take it That though. peachy destroyer in my bag, it was in my dad's bag for like two years. That's why it's so great right That's now. That's funny. Um, uh, then I have... Hammering into a wooden park bench. Ooh. So not throwing into it, but it has just to be wooden. It. You just take it by the rim and you slam it all around. Keep on rotating and yeah. slamming it into it. Because what it's gonna do is it's gonna do what beating up a disc does by mushing in the 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 rim of the disc. But since it's wooden, it will put no chips into your disc. Because if you yeah. do that on like a con concrete, you put chips and scratches and stuff in there. Very but a true. wooden park bench doesn't change the feel. It only changes the flight. Um, okay. That's I mean, I've one. never done that. That's a good one. <laughs> I've done that literally on the tee before. I was like, I really need this disc to flip. And I started hitting against the park bench. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and take using a dryer. Dang it. <sighs> that I just doesn't work though. No, it's one of the most... It's got to it work. Does work. Everybody no, does No, I've it. done it. I've done it before. It doesn't work. It does. If it didn't work, then not everybody would do it. Cause like everybody does it and swears yeah. by it. Robbie C swears by it. And would you dare? Would you dare cross him? I would never cross him. You just crossed him. If you say it never works, you're crossing Robbie C's name. I've just done it before and it didn't work. You gotta try it again, man. No, different dryer settings, different disc. All right. Well, I'm now down to I only have four, so I hope y'all don't take any of these. Um, my first one is a throwing a roller in the parking lot. Okay. I've done, parking I've done lot that. roller. Excellent. Um, and the other one Great I'm going way to, to get rid of prodigy flashing is run over the disc with a car. Excellent. Yeah. I don't also I don't have recommend done that. that way, but it works. Oh well, yeah. Of course it works. I really feel like that only hurts the high, the flight plate. Doesn't change the rim. No, because it like on the bottom. Yeah. That's, It'll make the disc flip here. I've that's got true. I've got one here that is um very autonomous. You don't have to, you kind of, it's a set it and forget it method, at least I've kind of found, and that is mm-hmm. letting your baby teeth on it. Oh. Okay. Let me tell you, it, it creates very nice little imperfections in the disc. Yeah, but there's just not really good chemicals Does it work with inside the dog? of a disc, though. So oh. like it's not good for the baby. But I, I don't care about that. I'm just oh, okay, my disc gotcha, broken gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And I'm also breaking him in. Mm-hmm. Does it work with dogs? Or just babies. Dogs are too. Their their teeth are too sharp. Okay. Babies babies' mm. teeth aren't quite as sharp. They mm. are sharp, but they're and they're also a little. You know, they only have a couple teeth. They're not as aggressive. Oh, they are pretty aggressive. Not at quite as aggressive though. I found because I thought immediately I was like, how about having your dog chewed? I was like, that's a little too much. I'm like, you know what? Brooks does like the teeth on discs, and it does make just little imperfections in the disc that I think would work great. Nice. 
So Connor, I'm going to go ahead. Two. I'm going to go ahead here and say one, and I do believe it's different. So I think I should be able to get it. Unintentional mm-hmm. tree hits. Trevor specifically said intentional tree hits. Mine is unintentional tree hits. Well, Hunter said playing around with it. That is unintentional tree hits. Well, I did say let me play around with it. So I guess I would just say you playing around with it. You as a person playing disc golf with it until it beats up. I'm trying to say natural tree hits. I mean, it's, the essence of that answer has been taken. Okay. Admittedly. We're going back to the essence thing. <laughs> just kidding. Um, I'm, just I'm a neutral third party because I'm about to make a similar argument. Uh-oh. Okay. Well, then just then allow, <laughs> you got to allow it then. Well, no, because if I allow that, it's definitely con- like I, I don't. We whatever Connor says here, or whatever Trevor says goes, and well, Trevor I think no, said it's no. fine. I won't. I'm a, I'm no, not flip flop. I don't think I don't. Flip-flop, flip-flop. I don't think it's <laughs> snip, my snap, snip, as a as a somebody who's competing in this. I don't think it's my right to decide. So we will let the fans with their votes decide. But the ultimately. fans are just looking at a list. Yeah, yeah, but most of the, I feel like a lot of most people are do listen, listen so but I, a lot of fans also I'll, don't. I'll let it stand. I'll let it stand. Okay. I'm not gonna. I don't need to be the judge, jury, and executioner. It's fine. Well, it doesn't matter. There's no one's gonna vote for unintentional tree hits over intentional tree hits. But uh, my I disagree. For, I disagree. My reasoning for unintentional tree hits is it gives you an upside. You know, you hit the tree and you're like, dang it, because you had a bad shot. But you're like, well, on the bright side, that rock's gonna flip up a little more. Very now. true. It's gonna turn into a better rock. So that's why I was saying that. Um, and then my fourth one is going to be just let it sit in your car and warp in the sun. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like every once in a while you just have that disc that sits in your car for months in the sun and you take it out, flips up way more than the last time you threw it. That's true. And you're like, Hey, that kind of works. Yeah. I didn't like this disc anyway. Trevor, your true. final one. My last one is going to be sandpaper. Mm. Um, very illegal. Yes. Well, of course. You do technically probably all of these are. But. Yeah, you definitely want. Yeah, we never we don't um, endorse any of these as legal activities. But well, um, if you're not playing in PGA events, yeah. do whatever the frick you want. Sandpaper. <laughs> you want fine grit sandpaper. It's it, this. This actually can accomplish a few things. This can, if you're beating up your disc in other ways, like hitting trees, and you get gashes, you can smooth out those gashes. So they. They're, I believe that is elite. Is that legal. is legal. Yes. yes. Um, and then also you can use it just to give it a little scrape. If you have a beaded disc, one of the quickest ways to take stability out of a disc is if it's beaded to start getting rid of that bead. And if you sand a bead down a little bit, you will instantly make that disc flippier. Um, that is, that is a fact. So sandpaper is a very good tool for breaking in a disc. Uh, my final one is just play Northwood black. That's a funny answer. That is a funny answer. Mm, hardest, most wooded course. I, that's probably a single disc round at Northwoods Black might be the best way to beat in a disc. Yeah, I thought of it. I was like, I feel like I can't play around in Northwoods Black be a, without. If we get out like, there next year, that would be a very funny video to do. Is like how beat in does our disc get playing just with one at Northwoods? Yeah, like mm-hmm. we we take like one like baseline disc out there and just see how it flies at the beginning at the we end. We could just do that in New London. Not it, wooded enough. It's I guess. not wooded enough. We no. could do it at Hideaway Blues. Hideaway would work. Go to Hideaway like Blues with a, a DX the Destroyer. Whoever's disc like still has the most. Yeah, it had most to be like, a DX wins. driver because it's gonna really hit those edges and just. Get we go most up. ability wins <laughs> at the end. Like score we doesn't let, matter. We let like right. Connor throw them both unbiased yeah. and see which one he thinks that'd be so. Funny. Yeah, most ability wins at the end. Score does not matter. <laughs> so That's it's just like avoid the trees. Avoid the trees. That could be a very boring round because you could be jumping. Okay, buddy. maybe so I think we'll score, figure out a way to, yeah, we'll score brain work to matter, it. Score yeah. matters a little mm-hmm. bit. It'd be like two different, maybe there's like three points to it. Like or score. it's just like a 50-50. Just like, you well, get if it's this, 50-50, if I win one, Trevor wins one to tie. You can't tie. I think that... Um, well, maybe we have a tiebreaker and it's a distance competition with the destroyers. There, solved. Boom. Roasted. <laughs> we got a video. Man, I love when we brainstorm on this show. That's just how it happens, I gotta, man. I'm going to write that in the Google Sheet real quick. All right. Uh, final thing to talk about on the show, a little off-season player I accidentally move. went to the Sheets app. He wants mozzarella sticks. That's funny. Off-season player movement. Uh, we had some actually go down. Sir Nico LeCastro has signed a Sir multi-year Nico? deal with Lone Star Discs, according to Lone Star's Twitter. Let me pull up their press release here and read it for you. But he is officially with Lone Star. Um very interesting. For the 2023 season and beyond. It doesn't have really any contract details. Um, mm-hmm. Let me scroll down. They also tweeted a video of him getting his hair cut, which is kind of cool. They did? Um, yeah. 
Lone Star Disc Inc. has signed Nico LaCastro to their professional touring team for a multi-year deal. As a result, Lone Star will be adding two new brands associated with Nico to their lineup, Flight Club, an apparel brand, and Sacred Discs, Nico's personal disc line. Nico will be throwing Lone Star Discs exclusively for the duration of the deal. Wow. Lone Star will also be releasing a Nico LaCastro tour series Jackrabbit in the coming days and will be providing access to both Flight Club and Sacred Discs next year. We're excited to have Nico on our team, and we look forward to a great year of disc golf, said the president of Lone Star Discs. Cool. Interesting sign. I think um, I think this signing is like a total, like, all PR is good PR type move. Like, Lone Star is trying to, like, establish themselves on the map. I think they have some good molds and some good plastic. I, I, I currently have a Lone Star Warbird in my bag. I think it's fantastic. Um, so, you know, I think it's a risk-reward play. They're like, hey... Hopefully he's learned his lesson, doesn't like get in trouble on the tour again. And if he doesn't, if he just is, you know, normal Nico who may ruffle some feathers, but won't get suspended, then like, I think it's probably a good move depending on what they paid. Um, the fact that they acquired his companies makes it feel like they were the aggressors in this deal. Well, which, I don't know if they, it's hard to know if they like fully acquired. They have access to his companies. Yes. The, that, that fact to me says that. And I think Lone Star should have the cards in this negotiation because a lot of companies probably wouldn't go near Nico at this point, mm-hmm. like which makes sense. Um, so I hope that Nico or that Lone Star is able to do good business here and get him for a good value. Um, and if they were able to do that, then I think probably a, a good signing. Um, but it's just one of those things where like if two months from now something happens again, Nico gets suspended, then it's like, well, then it was a dumb signing. It, it's... It's it's just totally a coin flip, I think. Yeah, but you know, I do think that realistically, this it really sh- just depends on the price. If I knew the price, I, I say, could really have an what, opinion. What should have happened here is Nico should be. It's a risk for sure for a company to sign Nico, but he has name recognizability. He has skill level to compete at the top. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could be a part of his redemption arc, where he True. could come out and like. Mm-hmm. You're now tied to someone who is a changed man in the 2023 season. It's true. There's a cap- there's a possibility there there's, as well. So, but what I'm saying for Lone Star though, why I think what I like this move is realistically he Nico with the current market scape should be the cheapest big name player out there. Should be. So as Lone Correct. Star, we don't know what they got him for, but with what went down last year and the fact that Nico's currently under suspension and hasn't like they don't know he's not proven yet. You know, we've heard Nico say he's changed and stuff like that, but nothing's proven until we get mm-hmm. on the course. Um, and so um, they're taking a chance on him. Nico, I'm sure, is eternally grateful for that chance. Uh, but in doing so, they should have gotten him at a discounted rate to where Lone Star now is a player in, in the game. Now now they have a, a top-tier player, and I think it's big they signed him exclusively because previously I was thinking it was going to be like like Chandler Kramer is throwing a mixed bag. Right. Exclusive Lone Star... It's going to be kind of fascinating. I think Nico's game will work well because like the Jackrabbit, I think he's going to love throwing. The Tombstone, um, I think, will work well for him. The Warbird is basically a destroyer. The mid-range slot, I think they have the Walker, which is an overstable mid. Um, Nico loves throwing flex lines, so they have a lot of really good overstable discs, mm-hmm. so I think that fits his game very well. The Cupacabra, another one. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of discs that will fit his game well, but they obviously don't have as established of plastic variety and mold variety as someone like a Innova Discraft prodigy would have. So on that aspect, he is going into the season slightly disadvantaged. Yeah. Um, but he does have enough tools that like he'll be able to play his game and we'll see. It's exciting. Exciting first uh, off season announcement and one that I, I think some player, some people didn't really expect, but it happened multi-year deal with Lone Star Discs and it could be very beneficial for both parties. Um, it also could be a train wreck, but it could be very beneficial. will be exciting we'll to keep see. an eye on in the 2023 season. And I think that's going to be one of the big storylines as we get to Vegas is Nico's return and also Nico's first tournament with Lone Star on his back. Yeah. Uh, more so Nico's return than the Lone Star side. But if Nico's return goes well, huge PR for Lone Star. So just depends a lot on what they got him for and we'll never know those numbers. So it is what it is. There you have this week's Grip Locked. We'll be back next week. Thanksgiving episode, Trevor will be gone. Um, he'll be up with some fam bam. But uh, Connor and I have got some fun games what up? to play on Grip Lock, so you're not going to miss out. We also have no idea what storylines are going to come out. I know the Pro Tour, I forget what they were announcing November 15th, but I remember saying something was November 15th. 
I don't remember. I literally remember reading November 15th. That's tomorrow. And then I kept going. Huh. I'm not sure. Gosh, event, qualifying events? No. Okay. You heard it earlier. <laughs> Man, so it's we also forgot to go it. over player of the year, rookie of the year, all that stuff. So we'll go over that next week as well. We're just trying to really make sure these things, you know, you got a reason to come back next week. We'll see you there. Same time, same place. Same place.